welcome back to the buck stops here we've now reached episode five uh what we'll do is we'll have a quick catch up it's been a couple of games since our last game where we where we won at bradford park avenue so we'll have a catch up on those take a look at the table and then get prepared for our game today where we take on nuneaton town of course nuneaton town uh they've appointed a football manager manager uh that being kevin chapman and you can find him uh, on Twitter at Lolujo, I believe is how it's pronounced. Uh, so that'll definitely be a series that's well worth taking a look at if you've yet to do so. Right, let's get straight to that catch up then. So the fixtures that we've had. So we uh, last were here on the 26th of August with a 2-1 victory at home against Bradford Park Avenue. We then travelled away just two days later to Leamington. Let's take a look there and recorded a 2-1 victory there. As you can see, uh, they opened the scoring. Uh, if you remember the, the goal that Tyrone Afori scored against Bradford Park Avenue, where uh, he pounced on a mistake from a back pass, exactly the same happened for Leamington here. Uh, Adam Henley knocked the ball back to Singh, overhit it, and Stephen Moore had a very easy finish. Luckily, we were saved by uh, a brace from John Marsden, who continues his incredible form of, of racking in goals in that shadow striker position. And two goals from him were enough to see us home, uh, returning to Telford with three points. We then uh, took on Blythe Spartans at home uh, and recorded a 3-1 victory. Uh, John Marsden opening the scoring, Dave McTiernan uh, equalising for Blythe. But uh, a brace from Owen Jones this time was enough uh, for us to record a pretty comfortable victory in the end. So that's the, the two games that have been missed. All in all, this leaves us. Let's take a look at the table. Drum roll, please. We're top. We're top by a point, uh, which is obviously nice. I mean, it's, it's still early days, but uh, undefeated. Goal difference of uh, plus 11. Uh, and as I say, today it's Nuneaton that we're taking on. So we'll scroll down the table and we can see it there in 14th. 1-2, uh, drawn 3, lost 3. Uh, goal difference of plus 1. So definitely not to be taken too lightly. Also, what we'll do as well is because uh, we finished the month of August. So let's just take a little look at some monthly awards then. So the awards are... and. Player of the Month went to John Marsden, perhaps unsurprisingly, and, uh, oh, how embarrassing. Manager of the Month is, is myself. Uh, obviously uh, delighted at that. Um, guided the team to the top of the table, but uh, in large part that is down to the performances of Mr. Marsden. So let's just take a quick look. So you can see his form, 10, 8, 8, 10, 8, average rating of 8.75. Uh, let's see if we can just see uh, how he's doing. What's going to be the one for this? Uh, form is probably going to be the best, isn't it? So, uh, yep, yeah, so you can see here that he's just being, um, yeah, in, in sensational form. Uh, didn't score against Darlington, so, you know, he might just need to up performance slightly. No, it's been a fantastic start uh, to the season from Marsden, and, and he's a massive reason why we, uh, where we currently are in the table, and long may that continue course form like that means that you're going to be noticed and I have received a transfer offer from Ebbsfleet United for £3,000 and surprisingly I turned that down he's worth far more than that uh, to the club okay so we'll go into today's game I can see that uh, Jordan Lussie is uh, seems to be a card away from picking up a suspension very combative in the midfield um, other than that, it's, it's an unchanged side from when you were last with us. Uh, I've got some good news on the injury front. Aaron Hayden, uh, he's returned from his injury. And uh, hopefully within the next game or two, we're going to be able to see him back in first team action. Okay, so let's continue here. It just takes, takes a look through at the fixtures for this midweek game. Yep, I'm happy with my team. Yes, we'll proceed to the match. Okay, and see that Nuneaton are uh, mirroring ourselves pretty much exactly. Uh, playing a 4-2-3-1, right-hand side, inside forward, cutting in. Uh, only difference is that their right-back is actually going to be playing as a wing-back, so pushing on uh, a bit more. So that might be something that Michaela, who's playing as a left-winger, can exploit. 
Let's just take a quick look at the uh, the key men. Uh, Daniel Iverson, their goalkeeper, um, valued at £375,000, so a pretty decent value for uh, the National League North. For ourselves, it's Owen Jones, so played four, uh, sorry, played eight, four goals, two assists, average rating of eight. Seems strange that uh, it's not Player of the Month Marsden, who's the, the man to be watching for us, but um, if it deflects attention away from him and it could be a bit of a surprise for Nuneaton, of course, that could be uh, good news for ourselves. Right, let's get on with the match then. So Nuneaton have kicked off, and Raymond going straight down the right-hand side, and but it's gone all the way back to their keeper. Ooh, a ball over the top down the right-hand side, Chambers... Uh, Looks to cross it, but Arthur Worry is able to block it, and it's out for a corner. As it's very early Nuneaton pressure here. Corner's taken, and it's cleared, but only back to Raymond. And Cowens is picking up a yellow card in the second minute. As Nuneaton get a free kick 20 yards out. It's laid off, and we're able to, to get it clear from the area as Ofori chase sit down. Hasn't scored in a couple of Ofori, uh, but others have stepped up well. Marston's been stepping up throughout, but uh, Jones stepped up last time out to, to ensure that we've got the points. It's all Nuneaton early on, another corner. And again, Sutton kind of gets it clear before Michaela thumps it out for a throw-in. OK, it's down the left-hand side now for Nuneaton. Nicholson crosses, and we have to head it over the bar for a corner. Come on, boys, we could do with waking up here. Raymond with the corner, it's an outswinger, and it's in. Langmead scores with a header. About six yards out. It's been a pretty poor start so far, I think would be the best way of putting it. We haven't put any pressure on at all. Uh, Kelvin Langmead, I believe he used to play for Shrewsbury, so uh, rivals of Telford there. Okay, and still it's all, all non eaten. We've had absolutely nothing so far. Iverson, he's got the ball, plays it long, and Simpson is in. Oh, no, he escapes with just a telling off from the referee, but uh, again, it's inviting more pressure on us. So, uh, Chambers with the free kick, delivers it in, and Singh is forced into a save there from 20 yards. Luckily, he's able to keep hold of it on the, the second go, plays out to Henley, and a long ball down the left for Michaela to chase, but nothing happening there. Just giving the ball away, Sutton called into action to clear it, only to Nicholson who crosses... And again, we have to concede a corner. This has easily been our, our poorest performance to date so far. Um, 25 minutes in and literally we have done nothing other than try and survive and hang on here. Uh, just blocking all of the corners at the moment, but not actually doing anything really. Sure they're going to be able to get this one in. Third time lucky. Nope, straight to Jones who plays it down the line for a forward to chase. Daniels lays it back, another shot, and Singh called into action again and saves it. Plays it quick, Marsden unable to get onto it, ball's coming straight back at us, and this time it's fired over the bar from 20 yards. Boys, seriously, we, we've got to get something going here. Being completely outplayed here, uh, a shot would be nice, um, I'm not going to be greedy and say on target at this point, just a shot would be nice. Uh, Marsden seems to be injured, that's probably the last thing that we could do with happening. Okay, Simpson, what's he going to do? Oh. He's going to play it up to Marsden, he gets fouled by Cook, but the referee is happy for it just to be a free kick. Uh, that's not, oh, Michaela, to Jones, back to Lussie, to Cowens, to Jones, it's all tight, and Jones equalises! First shot! And it's it on target, and it's a goal. Uh, fifth goal of the season for Jones. He draws us level. Undeservedly, you would have to say, but uh, I'm not going to complain too much about that. Uh, Cowens gets caught in possession, but no. He only got caught in possession because it was a foul by uh, Bezik, who enters the referee's notebook. So it's coming back for a free kick. It's taking its time to get there. A minute before half-time. We want to make sure we're going in at least level after a pretty disastrous half, to be fair, in which we somehow find ourselves level. Another corner for Nuneaton. Bezik takes, outswinger, it's up, not really clear, bit of ping pong, but we're able to get it clear. So half time, um, we've been completely outplayed. Uh, Nuneaton opened the scoring in the 14th minute with a header from Langmead from a corner. Um, 
and yet we somehow find ourselves level. We've had one shot, and Owen Jones scoring his fifth of the season from 20 yards has, has got us level. Take a quick look at tactics. Uh, Marsden already struggling a little bit, I think it'd be fairly safe to say. Uh, I think we're going to have to bring him off and probably fairly early. Uh, Simpson at right back's not having his best game either. We just do with somebody, particularly in the midfield, perhaps just getting their foot on it and, and getting the game going for us. Uh, we'll leave things as they are just for the moment. I want to try and get another few minutes out of Marsden, but around the hour mark, I think he's going to have to come off. Okay, let's get the second half going. Brackley and Tamworth are drawing. Chorley and Darlington doing the same. FC United are beating Blythe 2 0. Let's just hope there's like a really strong breeze, which is why we didn't get anything going in the first half, or, or that we're now the ones kicking downhill or something like that, because that first half performance was easily the worst that we've played all season. And I say easily, and, and that is by quite a long distance. Marsden, I, I think his race could be run here actually, as yeah, he's, he's not moved. And so the ball went away. Yeah, I'm, he's not even going to be able to reach the hour mark, is he? Let's be honest. Um, free kick from Besic that gets deflected. We'll see what happens with the corner. And, and then I think uh, Marsden's going to have to come off, unfortunately. Uh, obviously not a change I'd want to be making with a player who's been so good for us. But uh, if he can't move, he's not going to do anything. Uh, yet another non-eaten corner. Whipped in. And Lussie gets it clear, plays it up for a 4 -y. and he gets tackled. Right, tactics. Let's, let's, yeah, Marsden's definitely coming off. Uh, I haven't really got anybody who can go into that position, so I'm debating. Do we go for uh, three in midfield? I think we're going to, just to change things up. So Cowan's is going to go across there. Barnett's going to drop back. Barnett is going to play as a ball-winning midfielder as well. And that's going to allow me to put Cowens playing as an advanced playmaker. Hopefully an extra man in midfield will just help us out uh, a little bit more here. As uh, to say we've been struggling would be a bit of an understatement so far. Okay, let's see how we do with that. We'll resume. Gainsborough won up against Bradford Park Avenue and Harrogate beating Salford and probably saw the, the Kidderminster score. I think they were beating Curzon Ashton 2-1. Uh, throw in here just as we complete the substitution for Nuneaton, deep in their half. Not much happening there though. Ball over the top, Singh out very quickly. Jones heads it back. Uh, heading on could have been a bit handier there as we've been under pressure, but no, he, he elects to, to knock the ball back and we've had to concede a free kick. That we're able to clear. A four, he plays it on to Jones, who's going down the right. Checks back. To Barnett, to Lussie, back to Jones, Lussie, Cowens, Barnett, Lussie, Barnett, Jones, and cleared. Oh well. <laughs> and the Cowens, Barnett, the Cowens, seeing Barnett through, but he skews the shot horribly wide. Just starting to see a little bit more of the ball since that change, the extra man in midfield. Uh, hopefully helping us out just a little bit. Uh, Barnett to Michaela. To Jones, but nope, none eaten are able to get there first. They, they seem to be first to pretty much everything today, particularly in the midfield area. We've got a free kick though to perhaps relieve some of the pressure here. Again, it's none eaten coming down, uh, attacking down the left, plays it into Chambers, and good save there from Singh. Uh, gets out to Henley, back to Arthur Worry, and he just lumps it out, looking for Michaela, but massively overhits. Uh, Henley now forced to the ball out for a throw. Raymond crosses, Singh saves for a corner. Good save there. Um, he's had a good job to do today as Singh. First time he's really been tested this season. He's done pretty well so far. Um, let's hope he can keep it up for about the next 20 minutes because the way we've been playing, I will be absolutely delighted with the point. It will be complete robbery, but uh, we'll definitely have to take it at the moment because we have done nothing. I mean, Michaela has just dribbled the ball out there under very minimal pressure. Barnett, Cowens, Lussie, all a bit tight. And again, the Neaton are going to be able to break. Nope, as Barnett brings down their player and picks up a yellow card. Barnett with another foul. He's just been booked, so uh, 
and Tweed takes the free kick quickly from, from 30 yards and, and Singh is forced to tip it over. Nuneaton taking the game to Telford. Yes, they have been for sort of the past 75 minutes, to be honest. We have done so little. It's uh, almost beyond belief. Uh, I mean, we, we can't get out of our half. We can't keep hold of the ball. We're just lumping it forward and, and chasing and seeing it come straight back, to be honest. It's... Okay, and again, overhit. I mean, Michaela was in some space there, but there's not much he can do when it's overhit as much as that. Henley there with the tackle, so I'm not going to complain too much. Uh, Iverson with the ball. I hope he brought a good book today because uh, he's had so little to do, it's it's beyond belief. Um, Sutton now committee of foul just outside our area. Free kick to be taken. We somehow kind of scrambled it clear, and Michaela eventually clears it, but there's nobody up there. Iverson, we've woken him up. Well, actually, they've woken him up by giving him the ball. Tactics. That's... I don't know what I can do, really. Uh, Jones. Oh, he puts it over. I thought if he could have stolen it for us then, well, that really would have been something. Uh, uh, not great. Okay. Um... Uh, I'm going to take a four off. Let's just bring on uh, Barnes Homer, just see if, if that's going to have anything to do. Just a fresh set of legs for the final couple of minutes. Um, yeah, okay, let's, let's resume. Afori, that's three games now without scoring. But um can't really fault him today, as we really haven't had the ball in their half at all. Um, Henley removes the danger. Okay, well, we're not seeing the pitch, so I'm guessing we're not going to be seeing uh, anything happening here. Oh, we have got a free kick, though. Let, let's see that. Let's see if we can just rattle that one in and, and walk away with three points somehow. No. Just no. Jones evidently massively overhits it. Barnett, no. Tries to knock it out to Michaela, but Michaela's too slow. And that's just wide. To be fair, I couldn't have complained if that had gone in. Um, three points none eaten do deserve. Straight the middle to Cowens, back to Henley, to Jones. Cowens not able to get there. And Henley, oh, to Michaela. Can he get a cross in? No, he can get tackled. Okay, so we've got the throw in. At least we're down in their half. It's quite unusual. And Michaela looks to cross it, oh, it hits it. It pretty much sums up how we've been playing. And it finishes a draw. Um, absolutely no complaints. Completely outplayed there. Um, we had three shots to their 14. One shot on target, and it was enough to get a point. Um, yeah, pretty poor from us, to be honest, but we'll take the point, considering that we've been massively outplayed there. Just let go through all the results. Uh, it puts us down to second in the league, still fairly early, so not uh, too concerned about that. Uh, fans of AFC Telford were left frustrated. Actually, no, I would imagine they were delighted bearing in mind uh, how we played. I know we're expected to beat them, but how we played, um, we we can't complain at all. So, impressive shot stopping from the goalkeeper, very much so. And defense time tackles well, on the whole they seem to. Negatives, well, lack of steel in midfield. Well, picked up two yellow cards from there, but okay. Lone strike had little support, we struggled to get into the game. That's because we couldn't pass the ball over more than about three yards, and even that seemed to be a struggle. Midfield left too open, lack of forward runs from the midfield, that's because they were too busy fighting fires at the back and, and not passing to anybody. Striker struggled to win aerial duels, well, everything we've seen to play seemed to be just lumped aimlessly and probably not too near him. And he didn't test the opposition keeper enough, but it's probably difficult to test the opposition keeper when you don't have the ball. Let's just take a look at the player ratings. Um, despite being massively outplayed, we ended up with man of the match for Owen Jones, so go figure. Um, yeah, very bizarre. Okay, let's go back, uh, and what we'll do is we'll just head to AFC Telford. Oh dear, that doesn't look good. All right, let's take a look. Michaela, uh, let's scroll through, see if we can find out what his injury is. Where are we? Morale is poor, not really what I want to see. Uh, it doesn't look as though it's there. Nothing there. Nothing there that I can see. Injuries, none apparently, so maybe he's just a bit tired, which I'm hoping is going to be the same then for uh, John Marsden. Because if he's injured, I can see us really starting to struggle. 
Club, yeah, good, good, good. Um, again, nothing that I'm seeing there. Is it the next screen on? Injuries, none. So, yes, hopefully, just a bit tired. Um, yeah, could definitely do with Marsden being fit and, and really Michaela as well. We haven't got anybody else who can play on the left hand side. Uh, Barnett, he's only a, a yellow card away now from a uh, suspension as well. So, let's just take a look at our fixtures. Uh, let's see when. We'll next be joining. Um, I think it might go for quite a while now. Um, sort of towards the end of October, perhaps the the Southport match, which I think could be uh, a pretty important match. Well, I think Boston are close up in the table, so perhaps we'll uh, take a look. Yeah, so Boston are currently top. So I think what we'll do is we'll come back for the uh, the Boston game. Um, I think yeah. So so that's going to be the the next time. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll do the uh, three matches between now and then. We'll do a quick update and then we'll take a look at that Boston match in, in what will hopefully still be a top of the table clash. Although if we carry on playing like we did against Nuneaton, uh, I don't think we can guarantee that because I can't see us being that lucky to uh, somehow walk away with, with points again. Well, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, please leave a like. Please subscribe to the channel as well. Please share the videos, um, and I look forward to seeing you next time for The Buck Stops Here, when Telford United will be at home against Boston United.